Guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. What I thought we'd do today is continue with the training video and talk about modified resection. This is a navigational technique that's fairly easy to understand if you can read a map that will help you determine your location, especially on a linear object like a road, a creek bed, or something like that. As long as you can identify something in the distance that's identifiable on the map. In this case, we're going to use a farmhouse versus where we're at on this road to do a modified resection. We're gonna do a couple safety measures we're gonna talk about to help make that location more accurate. So stay with me, we'll get started. All right, so we've driven down a linear road here, and now we wanna know where we're at on this road because we're gonna use it as a starting point to go easterly off into the woods. We're gonna park here, take off, and we wanna know where we're at on that road so that we can get back to it when the time comes. All right, we need a map of the area. We need a compass that has adjustable declination so we can set it to match the map. These are the minimums, and then something to write with. Now, if we have a protractor, like this Pathfinder protractor that's got a 360 degree protractor around it, it'll make it somewhat easier, but it's not absolutely necessary. Okay, in this example, we know that we're on this road somewhere, but we're not sure exactly where. We want to go off into the woods and come back to that location. So we need to pinpoint our location on this road. Now, if we turned off of another road here, we could always do a pace count, but we've been driving a vehicle. So that is kind of out of the question at this point. Now, we have three structures that we can see here, and one of them is on almost a hilltop. Looking off in the distance, I see a farmhouse that is in a westerly direction from this road and it's on the highest piece of ground I can see so I'm going to assume it's this one. The other buildings that you can see here on this map would be obscured by the landscape because they are on the downhill side from here so they're kind of in the valley. All we can see is high ground here at 800 and this house is at about 800 so that's straight line visual distance there. These are obscured. So we're going to shoot an azimuth from where we're at right now with our compass to this known location. Okay, so the azimuth that we shot was a little less than 300 degrees. But what we really want is the reverse azimuth. So we'll just look at the bottom of our compass. That's going to give us the 180 degree reverse azimuth because we need to shoot an azimuth on the map from that farmhouse to this road. So it's about 118 degrees. So if we were going to use our compass, we would take that 118 degrees, and we would put it at the top of the compass. Then we would lay our compass so that this straight edge is on that structure, and we would turn it until the needle's in the doghouse. Now, the reason we're using a protractor instead of a compass for this is because I'm on top of a metal object in the back of this four-wheeler, which is going to affect my compass needle. So I've got the same compass rosette here, and I'm just going to lay the center line of this on that object that I shot the azimuth to, and then go 118 degrees from that until I intersect the road. And then I'm going to make a line on the road right there and that is from one location, this farmhouse, my proposed location on the road. Now there are a couple ways we can try to verify that or at least know that we're close. Now looking at this map, I'm looking for other identifiable terrain features. And you can see that if my location is here, it's showing that there's a knob on the map right here off that side of the road that's not very far from my location. So if I turn around and look on the other side of this fence line on the other side of this road, there should be a knob right there. Okay, looking at the terrain out here, how everything goes downhill out here in front of me, and then it comes up to the road, and right there's high ground. So that knob is just down the road from where I'm at, just like it is on the map. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna look at is you can see where that sycamore's at. Now that other farmhouse you can see in the distance is off the edge of our map. We can't even use that. But you see where that sycamore's at? There's a draw, and all of this terrain goes downhill right here, from both sides on high ground, down into the draw where that sycamore is. So let's see if we can find that on the map and then shoot an azimuth to that and see where that comes out. Okay, so I shot an azimuth out there toward that draw 
where that sycamore's at. And it won't be in the bottom of the draw, but it's definitely on downhill on this side of the draw. And the reverse azimuth on that is about 82 or 84 degrees. Remember, we're not worried about the azimuth, we're worried about the reverse azimuth on our map. Now remember that we don't know exactly where we're shooting at over here. We're kind of guesstimating where that draw was. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my string and I'm gonna put it on 82 degrees. And then I'm going to put that string right on the point that I already factored in. And I'm gonna move it up and down until it's about 82 degrees, keeping the protractor square and see where that lands. And it lands on the inside of this draw. This draw comes down and there's high ground on both sides. That could be where that sycamore's sitting. So that gives us another key indicator that we may be close in our calculation. All right, so remember now we're modifying this resection because we only have one absolute known point that we can see on the map and we can pinpoint to shoot an azimuth at. Now we're looking at other things to verify. We looked at the knob over here off to our left, to our south west to make sure it showed up on the map close to where we're at and we looked at a draw going down in front of us and a ravine that runs down and we shot across that to see if that was pretty close to where we're at and that was pretty close on the azimuth we shot but now what i want to do to verify this to make sure that we're speaking apples to apples here is i'm going to pull out my gps on my phone and write the grid coordinate down and plot that on my map to see where we're standing versus where I thought we were standing to verify how close we are. All right, according to the GPS, we're at this grid coordinate. Let's plot this dude on the map. All right, 68.22, so writing up, 68.22, we're in this grid square, and that's where our mark's at, so, so far so good. Now, from 68, we're 96 over, which means we're 900 meters over 960 meters over that's pretty good too so we'll go ahead and measure that out i can look at it until it's pretty close on that aspect of things so we'll start here and we'll go over to 96 All right which is going to put us right here and then we're going to go up and our up is 94 so we're going to go up to 94 which is right there and 90 six which is right here and you can see that circle i can zoom in on this a little bit that circle is almost exactly over the top of the mark we made on the map so we made almost a perfect calculation to the gps with modified resection right so that worked out extremely extremely well better than i thought it was going to i mean it was almost pinpoint accuracy however Remember that whenever you are doing something modified and you're not resecting from two absolute known locations, that you better have a couple other backup options in there. We took a linear line to that farmhouse, but then we also looked at the knob over here. We looked at the terrain feature of a ravine going down. And we combined all those things to kind of verify that that first line we drew was in the right spot. And in fact, it was. All right, guys. So now we know where we're at. We know where we're starting. Now we take off. We can map ourselves from there by keeping a travel log and understanding where we turn, what azimuth, how many paces and things like that to get right back where we started from because we know exactly on this map where we started the game. That's important. So I appreciate you guys joining me today for this video. I appreciate everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back at the end of the video as soon as I can. And remember, little things like this are the difference sometimes between getting lost and staying found. Thanks, guys.